Hey everybody, Texas Drill here, Lance's Perform Shop, Lone Star, Mopars.com. It's Saturday night, a hot one in the shop. Looks like some rain may be rolling in though, so that'll be a nice change of pace. And speaking of change of pace, I just finished editing the dash removal process. Uh, we left off here on the tailgate, kind of highlighting where we thought all the screws might be. And I polled everybody. I was checking to see if people preferred like one really long video or one, you know, like uh, removal process broken into multiple parts. My personal opinion is it's best to have it in a uh, long video, and that way you can scrub through it, everything's right there. Uh, as the polling stood last I checked, it was about a two-thirds of you agreed with that logic. Uh, One-third of you, of course, wanted it broken down in shorter segments. Um, obviously, I would have gone with what I thought and what the majority of you thought, since the two aligned, but it would have been about a two-plus-hour video, and there's a couple issues with that. Number one, I'm not sure who's going to watch it <laughs> or, or find it convenient or just annoying at that length. And number two, and the bigger thing is, I don't have good internet. Uh, oftentimes, when I try to do anything past like an hour and 15 minutes or so on an upload, it fails. It just kicks it back. YouTube gets tired of waiting for my slow internet and nothing materializes. So with that coupled, I decided to just stick with that for now. I will, however, uh, try to keep the files, you know, archived. I have three videos saved to standalone projects I could potentially combine. Uh, maybe if I reduce the quality, like cut down, you know, like uh, the resolution, maybe it would be a smaller file size that could be processed. But uh, that is why we did what we did. Again, my personal thoughts just like what the majority of you said make it you know if it's pulling the bed off of the truck do one video you know don't make five installments on it uh, way back in the day on YouTube you had to you know like in the early days you were limited to 15 minutes uh, had to be approved to get a longer upload time things like that you can make justifications for but I do agree and my personal opinion is if I'm doing something relatively simple it should be you know all in one uh, that could not be so uh, it is what it is but uh, what can be is trying to get this off and I've been sitting out here I've kind of drawn some more I've been trying to figure things out again the goal here is simply to get the sub dash which you know I refer to as the plastic here off of the metal frame now when I flipped it I put a few screws I think three one on the left one on the right one in the middle kind of keep the plastic intact with whatever else was holding it which seems to be the defroster vents the vent structure or I guess not the defroster vents necessarily but like our AC vents now at this point in time so what I'm thinking we've got a couple of options we could come in flip the dash on the front side try to get these freed from the plastic again the weakest link here I'm not concerned about this plastic feels pretty robust I'm concerned about the dash plastic therefore prying the dash plastic to get this out and possibly more importantly wedged back in scares me because this plastic here the sub dash as I refer to it is not available you can't get it you'd have to go to a wrecking yard going to a wrecking yard one that's gonna be a ton of work number two you're probably gonna get something in worse shape than what you already have then if you find something online that's in good shape it's a expensive and B will probably be ruined in freight because you know it's not going to be close by so I've been assessing it of course you know if we were just putting the dash top on we would be done I would have that buttoned up I'd had somebody help me and throw it back in reverse the removal process right but stuff like this you know <laughs> <laughs> it's there I see it it bothers me this is as good of a chance as you have to do it now if you're just real quick replacing a heater core and you've got the dash strapped up I totally understand not you know breaking it down or if you're gonna flip the truck uh, if it's just like a beater work truck for you you know that you're planning to replace this is uh this is my truck it's I'm happy with it I'm proud of it I intend to keep it for many many years <laughs> and uh, subsequently stuff like that weighs into your decision on what course of action to take now we could still back out, I could still change things, and of course you could come in and spray this. No one's ever going to see if there's overspray here on the vent structure or the back of the dash or the sub dash even. In some cases if this was flipped, you could mask it off, but you just can't do a good job when you've got rust to this degree. Keep in mind, I live basically in a desert with minimal rain. The truck is taken care of immaculately, dare I say. Uh, so it's not like I leave it out with the windows down in the swamp or right by the Gulf Coast or something crazy, right? <laughs> this is a scenario where this is probably really good for the 20-year mark. And what bothers me is if I were to come in and do that, you know, like I maybe mask off here, well, there's 
flash surface rust on the flip side of that that's totally concealed by the plastic. Therefore, my fancy, you know, prep work and paint job, I've got the rust just come back and start flaking that off, and then you're going to have a mess under your dash. The proper way to do it is to just completely remove the rust, clean everything, and of course, like I said, the other goal is to not break the plastic. <laughs> that might be the more difficult thing. So what I've been trying to do is figure everything out, and I'm kind of wondering, this could totally backfire in my face, but, you know, we'd have this connection here, you know, going black AC vent into the sub dash. You've got the center one, and then you've got one above the glove box door there, and the other above the glove box door here, all right? So this is sort of flip. This would be the glove box center steering wheel area. Uh, that kind of makes sense for you. If you note, this is kind of like a modular deal, or it could be. You know, you've got the passenger side ductwork here, which again, you know, you could get that off. You've got this, which you almost have off at this point in time. We also have this that could come off. There is a tiny freaking screw in here. I don't mean tiny, I guess just hard to see. Uh, straight back. I'm not even sure that you can see it, but just uh, run with me here. Right about there that we would have to get out. You know, we may have to bust out a longer... We'll get to do it. Uh, this is a standard 4-inch. We'll get to get out like a 6 or an 8-inch. <laughs> so that's why you have multiple length screwdrivers with the same tip, if you're ever wondering. So uh, we could take that off, go to town here. Obviously, we've removed this, you know, stamped bracket to that. So this is fairly loose. We've got a little bit of play. Uh, there are a couple of things here, like this vacuum line connection that we want to be very careful with. That plug is not coming through the top side unless we deform it. I don't want to do that. There is a plastic clip connector here we would want to get off, and I do think that then this could be extracted and snaked out through that oval slot without issue. Coming from the top down is not going to happen. This going up from the bottom through the top, I think that would actually work. Uh, so that is clipped to this structure. That would be a hold up. I know it looks like there's a ton going on, but this is all closed off duct work. The rest of this is wiring, which yes, we will have to address and remove to properly paint this or mask it off again, whatever you kind of ultimately decide. But the goal right now is plastic and this stuff. So like this screw, it holds this wiring. Okay, the clip, that's all. That uh, doesn't have any relation to this stuff. I'm kind of thinking the easiest way to do this might be to get this center section, that sort of square 699 port off. And then with it gone, the rest of this should just go with the plastic sub dash. Or at least that's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong. It's happened a few times. Not many, but a few. <laughs> and, uh, we'll just sort of see see what we get ourselves into again I can't find anything on this uh, let alone video I can't find articles I can't find write-ups and there's just nothing so uh, we're sort of freewheeling it for real at this point in time uh, I really want to get the fan back up because uh, I pointed it down so you wouldn't have that annoying hurricane wind which I'm surprised I don't have it cranked that high but it seems to happen so uh, stuff like this, I believe that to me it just looks like sound deadener. Like if we were doing a fancy aftermarket stereo, maybe it's to cover a area they thought would leak into the blocks. I don't know. But lots of little intricacies you can discover. But I think that's what I'm going to try is uh, freeing the defrost vents, or AC vents, I'm sorry. Got the defroster vents, that big black row you can see there on my mind and uh, seeing what we get into you and uh, then assessing the wiring assuming that that works so <laughs> i'm gonna start messing around see what happens i'll keep you updated with my decisions as best as i can okay like 10 seconds seriously 10 seconds i'm gonna try to block the fan that's all the time this took i made the mistake of starting on the passenger side duct right there and then I thought the middle would be better, and then I noticed that the driver's side was starting to come out. So I let it come out, and that's exactly what it did. And then this one sprung up pretty easy. And then last but not least, the only one that really put up any fight at all was the passenger side. So uh, that opens up a lot of hidden crud right here, you know. <laughs> We've got uh, some wiring. There's a ground that I had no clue was there. Uh, we got some cable tie patch. I hate these plastic i just i don't know as a machinist it's metal you know i prefer metal over wood but stuff like this it just and in part you can't really find it like it's super hard to find this credit it's like a cable tie with a landing pad and if you like try to find that online to purchase some it's just ridiculous i'm sure there's a website i'll probably discover but as of right now that's a thorn in my side
Uh, that said, the only thing holding this, as I mentioned, is going to be a plastic clip right here on the vacuum lines, which we want to split that as best we can until we have it free. But with that done, I think I'll just extract this from the bottom, as I mentioned, through the top. Uh, you can sort of see our top end plug, the amber connector, if you recall, from our HVAC control disassembly. By doing that, I want to say we'll flip this sucker over, take some screws out, and uh, see what happens. And apparently we're in a severe thunderstorm watch, so awesome. <laughs> so, I'm going to see how far we can get with this, and uh, we'll catch you back in just a little bit. Well, that's progress. Again, all we had to do is uh, take the clip right there out. I then, as we planned, through that oval slot you can kind of see right here. Again, this plug ain't happening. That's not going to come down through there unless you deform it. Don't do it. Don't risk it. This side fits. We just routed that through. I'll probably even be able to bundle this and make it look pretty cool uh, when we go to the reinstall. We got that out of the way, uh, which is great. Again, now I'm thinking if I were to flip this, I'm not seeing anything that would hold me up. Again, there's our trusty trim tool that's got the turned handle. Super annoying. We're going to have to <laughs> find a tough fastener so we can twist it back the other way. But uh, I'm thinking we ought to be able to get the plastic off. And then we will, of course, have still a mess of wiring to contend with. But hey, uh, at that point in time, I'll take it. Because again, just look at this. Like, this was totally covered. If you just did a half spray job on this, you know, where you hit what you could see, this is all still here. You know, you didn't see it, you didn't spray because it it's underneath the plastic ductwork, right? And then it's just going to go and ruin what you did spend a little time on. So if you're going to do something, there's the easy way and the right way. And I'm, I'm fully intent on doing this the right way. So that's what we're going to try to make happen. But so I'll get back to work and uh, see what kind of a mess we get into next. All right, so what you missed is me flipping the dash and realizing I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, well, let me explain why. So, basically there are a couple of things I should have done, two of them being right here in the instrument cluster, right? I can finally see, that's a pretty tall rise if you look at the tan part, sort of like the, uh, come in on this side, right? Poor Zet gloves getting rust all over them. But uh, I'd use them to try and keep clean, like not damage the plastic and look what we did. But anyway, that's actually really tall. I'm kind of afraid that might break, but that's what holds that in. Same thing with the companion over here on the back side. This right here, whatever purpose it serves that I'm unaware of, just has like this same aged plastic clip on the back side. So I guess we'll need to pop that out too. Probably should have done that from the front side now that I think about it. Anyway, we'll figure it all out eventually, but those two need to come. This is something we need to contend with because obviously it's a connection from the electrical to the plastic. And then the other thing, and I started to do this and I said, no, nah, but we could get it from the flip side. Right in here, you can't really see it well, but we basically have our 12 volt outlet and the cigarette lighter. And that's where this convoluted tubing's coming down, right? Much, much easier to get to it from this side, so that's what I'm going to do. I should have already done that. Uh, I put one screw back in right in the dead middle. <laughs> and, uh, again, it's probably best if you flip this with two people, but I'm working solo. Uh, tight quarters are really bad. Um, I have to actually, I'm, since I'm here on the tailgate by the door, I'm able to just put the door up and then I have extra space. But again, make sure when you're flipping this, taking it out, turning it around, whatever you're doing, the dash is the length of your vehicle, basically. So keep that in mind. Make sure you have space ahead of time. But uh, I think we've got these two issues, those two issues, and this plug. And if there's anything past that, I don't know about it yet. So uh, it might... I think we'll leave this. Uh, this cleared fairly easy. I can get the center to clear. This kind of hangs up a little bit, but I think we'll be able to work with it. So I'm going to get back to work and see what we can figure out. All right, so got this out. Now, the good news is I thought before I just punched that through on the other side, got the tab here, able to slide this out. I'm kind of wondering if this is like just a bunch of ground wires, but I'm not sure. I say that because of all the orange and black here. But nonetheless, uh, these, again, I was a bit worried about how tall that riser of plastic was, but uh, busted this sucker out. I just ordered it with the uh, Vera Advent calendar. I hadn't even gotten to make a tool haul on this. Uh, my apologies there, but we'll at least know it works and it was good quality. Got that one off. Got the black one off. Again, when you reinstall these, you'll have to slide them through and kind of snake them into place, then clip them in. Uh, should be difficult but simple at the same time, if that makes any sense. 
Uh, of course, whenever you do that to free the dash, the sub dash from the metal frame, you want to go ahead and slide them to this open cavity and pull out. Uh, again, right there is the tracks. So you've got kind of a keyed track on the top, slot on the bottom. Get it over, slide it through. That way you're clear. Uh, we are now ready to come in over here and address the uh, cigarette lighter and 12 volt outlet. Again, both highlighted by the black convoluted tubing, which isn't commonplace back here. Uh, mainly limited to that and then uh, I think some airbag connections, but as we're doing that I'm looking at this and uh, you can kind of see we got a lot of wiring going on right here Which again we will have to remove in order to do a good job painting and what I think I may do You can kind of see the connectors there the uh, We got red kind of spearmint green with white tracer and forest green I think and then a black kind of running in there. I think what I'm gonna do is remove this from the dash assembly just to get it out of the way keep it safe get this disconnected uh, that way it'll free up a little bit more access for me here to work with and then coming in over here this has just kind of been sort of like a pivot point every time i flip the dash around there is a very long screw running through it again it goes all the way through the box to this side i think i'm going to go ahead and take that off just to protect it again when you reassemble it's basically perpendicular at an odd angle but uh, you'll have the green and the white. Uh, so again, keep that in mind. Green at the bottom, white at the top. Should line up because, again, there's not a hole here. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm going to do. And then I think if I can come in and get... I've got the screw right here. I think you can kind of see the black threads coming through right about there. If I can get like an offset screwdriver in here, I think I could then just pull the metal away from the plastic since the plastic's face down and that's ultimately again my goal is to protect the plastic I'm very concerned about the plastic <laughs> if we haven't made that clear so I think we're uh, making good headway here we'll do a little extra disconnecting just to be safe and uh, then we'll have the metal substructure uh, metal frame away from the plastic sub dash we can assess the wiring unclip all of that and go to town so uh, I will check back and we'll see how everything went all right, so you can see that thing removed. I can't remember if we showed the case that or not yet, but what I ran into issues with was these stupid clips, with 12 volt outlet, and of course our cigarette lighter. And uh, what I wound up doing is just using this 90 degree pick tool that we just pulled from a tool hall, and uh, worked beautifully. So I'm gonna swing this up so we can actually take a look at it together. I was initially trying to come in down here and uh, then push in and pull at the same time, right? Uh, I could not get that to work, so I just held down here with the pick above that, and it worked beautifully. Extracted that one first, in all honesty, and then came back and got this one, so zero complaints there. I tried finding videos to make sure I wasn't going to break anything again. I don't deal old cars. We didn't have to deal with this crud, right? <laughs> so I didn't know if this needed to come out or what. I just wanted the harness, and I thought, well, maybe that's to come as an assembly. You can, in fact, just clip it out like so, and uh, we've got that taken care of. So the important thing to note, I suppose, would be which one goes where. And this one with the kind of aged plastic clip on it, right? That goes up to the top port, the blue one. And you can see you've got orange with a black ground, and then you've got red for your hot. And then right here, or I assume it is, you know, it could be different. This is honestly the same setup, but again, it's uh, just a red with a black right there. So uh, top to the blue, you're going to have that aged plastic. And then the green plug here at the bottom, we're actually going to have structure with that so uh, also this is one of the many advantages of the brawn light being the flex head I'm able to put it in that awkward spot which I don't think I showcased this either took it out I went ahead just for reassembly purposes. I couldn't find my uh, thin blue masking tape, so I just did a Sharpie trace on it that was already torn up wasn't me <laughs> and then back here there went my screw uh, you can see I traced it now. What's cool, there's that 90 degree bracket and then there's locating pins, right? If you look at that bracket, you'll actually see that this sort of snakes and rests in. So it's not as critical as I thought when I traced it. It'll kind of position itself. So as long as we don't do anything stupid when we're sanding all that rust off, we should be home free. And more importantly, with that, I believe we've got it to a point, once again, <laughs> <laughs> where I should be able to extract the metal dash frame from the plastic sub dash. So we've disconnected the cigarette lighter, the 12 volt outlet, 
both of these instrument cluster bezels that thing which again has a clip going through uh, the body module or whatever you'd call that I'm sure there's probably a better name for it and I think we're ready to go we also took this off so I've got the one screw that we're gonna try to extract from the flip side and I'll see if we can pull the metal off from this side so uh, wish me luck and we will be back Sorry for the noise, they seem to have called in the police helicopter for the crazy guy dismantling his second gen Ram Dash. But, uh, a couple of stupid things I did, which I've rectified here. The VI number 2, it is there with the screw beside it because, unlike my earlier assessment when I was thinking of doing something different, we actually did need to remove that screw there because, as you can see, it went to the plastic dash. So that's why that's dropped down. Uh, then as I was starting to lift the metal away, I uh, realized that we still had the light sort of in our uh, coin holder ashtray, whatever you want to call it. So I've disconnected that. Again, we've got orange with a black and an orange tracer and it will plug in like so. Uh, that should stay hitched. This will come with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now it's back to just lifting it off and seeing if I run into any issues. So uh, once again, disconnect the light bulb socket and then remove that screw which held the wiring, this whole plastic thing here. It's not anything to do with ducts, it's just a uh, elaborate wire cover to kind of route and shape the wire. And uh, that one though right there is important. So uh, let's see what we've got this time. You might notice something is missing, something rather large and something rather <laughs> rusty. Uh, and what that something would be is the metal framework. So I ran into one issue in the removal and that is the fact that I forgot to factor in that I'm limited space here. So case in point, if we were to turn, there's the door. I'm hitting the door. <laughs> All right, so there's minimal space for me, and then it becomes really problematic when you try to fit that, which is the metal framework. Uh, that is our dash frame. We're now to the point. All we've got to contend with is some wiring. So obviously to make this easier on myself and you, I think I'll get it up on the tailgate. That means we've got to move everything else. But, uh, I know wiring intimidates people. At this point in time, though, you should be pretty comfortable with everything. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get the spots switched around, label some screws I've removed, and uh, get ready to go to town. So I may have to may have to clean the bed of the truck up a little, <laughs> right? I've had the headers just kind of sitting there waiting, the old throttle bodies there. Um, I think I'm going to have to jump up in there and make some space for the rest of this stuff. So the good news is I don't think we cracked any more of this, the plastic dash, which again, you got to remember, this is not repop. You can't go to LMC and buy this. You can't go through Chrysler. This is obsolete at this point in time. Uh, maybe you can find like new old stock somewhere. Uh, if you get really lucky and then you're probably going to have to pay a crud ton of money for it, which is probably why it's still in stock. Uh, your next best option is wrecking yards, which again, we've covered that. You'll either get lucky or it'll be something that's in worse shape than you have. Then if you find something online, like on eBay, it might be in great shape. And then by the time it gets to you through freight, it's probably going to be broken. So can you drive halfway across the country to get a sub dash? Maybe you can, but this is where a lot of people just get rid of the truck. <laughs> and, uh, or deal with you know having like a terrible interior but anyway very proud of what we accomplished this is absurdly light that reminds me there's still change in here I should probably get that out at some point but uh, anyhow I never did take that out uh, it was the one thing that you know never seemed to need to come and then also uh, I wasn't quite sure how to get it and didn't want to break it so we just didn't mess with it but so Anyhow, this got to get up here so we can assess it, get some of that rust coming off, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so here we are. I've had to do some cleaning in the back of the truck, like I said we'd have to do, but uh, got the metal frame up here. Shout out to the duster under a tarp for holding the plastic dash frame. Really wasn't anywhere else I felt safe putting it, so... Uh, this is what we're working with and again this would be driver's side even though you know passenger side of the truck this is passenger side even though it's driver side of the truck because it's flipped so I want to come over here these two connectors I'm just gonna go off the best of my memory here these would both be to the heater box area and you can see we have a cable tie landed on a clip right here in the dash frame coming up we've got yet another clip right there then we have one that stretches down and terminates right here. You've got black with an orange tracer and pink. That, if I'm remembering correctly, will be our glove box light assembly. Coming in right here, we've got our next clip, sort of at the oval. Again, this is just a taped harness up to this point, nothing fancy. Uh, coming in on the other side of that arch, we have another connector. 
Uh, then we get to this point. This would be our next cable tie connector, okay? Uh, at that point in time, we hit this bracket right here. It's going to come up, obviously, dash support. Testament by the fact that that is still there, as is one on this bracket. But coming over here, we're going to then move forward again, or I guess towards the back in this case, and we have convoluted tubing. This is yellow, that means it's airbag. So that's where that's at. We then come in, we've already covered this clip. Our next one isn't until right here, okay? Important thing to note about that clip location is that it's going to be right above this ground, okay? We got just tons and tons. Looks like anytime we see black with an orange tracer, even right there at the top, there's black with a white tracer. I think you can kind of see that now. That is likely going to be ground because that's where it's going. Going. So right there you've got that clip. Now coming back though, it's important, this was our cable tie clip, that's our next cable tie clip, but here in the middle, kind of at a seam, I'm not still not quite sure where or when they're using the sound deadening material, but again, if you've ever done sort of like a high-end stereo or you've applied sound deadening in an old car, that's sort of what that is. I don't know if that's like a joint, an overlap in the frame structure, but it's there. So we're making note of it. Right where that's at, though, we come down and we have this really nice loom, and that goes into a airbag connector. You can see the red clip. On the back side there is a rail. That's because it should fit right here onto the dash frame just like this one does. The airbag itself going in the orientation it should be. There's like green with a yellow tracer. We've got black with a yellow tracer, purple with a yellow tracer, and then kind of a brown with a yellow tracer. So again if you haven't picked up on it 2001 Dodge, they like to use yellow to indicate airbags. So, uh, this connection, I honestly could not tell you what it was for at this point in time. But we've got green and yellow, and then black with like a pink tracer, green and yellow being the outboard. I need to at some point get this to slide off just like this one so I could just contend with this one. If you were to look at the other side, this one has two tracks. It's basically a glorified version of this, but again, as a rail for these clips. So in this case, you've got that tab, and if that's the same, we would need to deactuate that, hopefully slide it off. Now, continuing on from the grounds where we left off, we've got that clip. Up here at the top, we've got a very thin one, and then we go to this. This is looking like an outlet, or I mean a bulb type of a socket, which would either be, it's not glove box, it could be cup holder, it could be something else, but I'm thinking that's what it is anyway. Uh, you got orange and you've got black and orange again. Surprise, that would be a ground that likely goes right there. Continuing on, we have another thick cable tie right here, okay? Uh, that is holding this thin wire strand, again, just routing it. That's all those clips are doing is sending this strand over to terminated light source, I believe. It's coming out of this wired loom here that comes out of the plastic sheathing, which is in a U-shape, which goes around the steering wheel behind the gauge cluster. There's some of that weird foam tape, which I've never seen anything like that. Again, if it was used in old cars, I'm sure it's just all gone. But uh, here we have a slew of wire. Um, I'm thinking they're stereo. Don't hold me to that, but I want to say stereo. And then up here, coming out of the plastic sheath, oh, lights are flickering with that storm, so the lightning must be pretty bad. Uh, but we've got this stuff here, which I want to say is going to be HVAC area. Don't hold me to that either. It's been a while. Uh, but coming back down, that's where we're going to stop there. We come back over at this edge, we have another bout of sound deadener. And if we were to come down, we need to first trace back this way. And we've got these two connections, right? So this uh, sort of black connector, I think, went down low. And then this one with the kind of cruddy went up high, the old aged plastic. I think it was a blue connection and a green connection. These would go to our 12 volt power outlet and our cigarette lighter. This goes to the piece that we took off here just for our convenience. Uh, let's continue on this way, the plastic sheathing, right? We've kind of covered this, it's coming out, it's tucking up into that cable connector there, and then it routes out three things, the grounds back to the ground stud, and then these two for your 12 volt outlets. Coming 
farther down, we've got this, which if you recall, I unplugged. I think it went to the light in the coin holder or ashtray, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that's all that one is. Coming farther down, you've got this bundle that is going to be your OBD2 stuff. And that kind of scares me disconnecting that. <laughs> so we'll have to maybe see if we can find info on there. Uh, coming farther down, you've got convoluted tubing. You can see it snaking. And it goes to this, which if you recall, this, my friends, is the airbag control module. It clipped somewhere. Uh, we've disconnected it. I honestly can't remember where. I'm sure we'll figure it out as we lay it out. If not, it is not the end of the world. So, coming over again, backtracking OBD2, snake up, snake back down. We have all of these connectors, all right? This would be our body control module, and then this one probably comes somewhere over here towards the steering column, best as I'm thinking, you know, just, just making do with what we have. All these wires come in and they do this like odd termination thing. That is again, just a push pin with a landing pad on it for that harness. But the good news is we'll be able to hit this and just slide that out. We'll make note everything yellow is at the bottom, everything blue above that, green, black, and purple at the top. So essentially, if you were to screw this up somehow without that pin, green at the top, blue in the middle, yellow at the bottom take it for what it's worth. Right here we have a screw that we will have to extract. This holds the plastic wire routing onto the dash frame essentially, right? So coming up this way, I think we covered these. Again, uh, not quite sure exactly where they went, but I do know where these went, okay? This plugs into the plastic sub dash and it would be one of the connections for your gauge cluster. The gray one over here does the exact same thing on the opposite side. This has a pinned connector. Again, it's really old aged plastic. It just plugs in like so. You can see the actuating tab. Coming in down this way, we now exit our plastic sheathing. We've got the wire loom here. Lots and lots of stuff going on here. We've got this, which was tapped somewhere. We've already disconnected it. And then we've got this one that plugs in to something as well. You can see I've pulled the clip basically. Uh, so we have that going for us. I think it tucked in awkwardly because you couldn't really get to that. But anyway, at this layout, just denote the top one. You've got blue at the top, brown at the bottom, whereas here you've got kind of a, that would be one that you could mess up, <laughs> purple and white. If not for the clip, that would keep it one-sided and oriented correctly. As we continue on coming down, we've got this heavy, heavy loom stuff going here, and if you recognize that piece, I hope you do, it goes to the steering column. This little blue clip, that's going to plug in. It has the 10 millimeter bolt, which I guess we've sat somewhere, hopefully. All these connections, again, will be up on the steering column. So, coming back over this way, we have this connection, that gold with this black dot. That is a 10 millimeter headed bolt. This would be our main firewall connection if you will and then we also here have a airbag connection that was kind of sneaking around that would probably again tie in with your regional airbags in this case the steering wheel coming down we've got a couple of these suckers <laughs> which oh good grief they uh not ringing a bell but i'm sure it'll be easy to figure it out when we go to reassembly purple and white this is the one i had to break i just i could not get that to come out uh, which that was a nightmare situation. Here we've got our dash, our main you know fuse box area going on. We have the three that we extracted that were super difficult because again, note here this structure where my fingers pointing, there where my fingers pointing, and there where my fingers pointing. That's where the tabs were. If the engineers would have just flipped that and had the tab facing out, then when you break the dash free and roll it down, you could very easily articulate each one of those three as is. They were inverted with the clips facing in towards the rest of the connections in the fuse box, making it a complete nightmare, to put it nicely. <laughs> so, uh, it's a pretty simple job. There's just a couple of things that take some time, some of them because they weren't really thought out for removal. Uh, coming in up here, we've got these two plugs. I want to say headlight switch area, uh, somewhere in that range. Then we've got the fuse box, which we will probably try to remove now. I've taken one of the screws out, which would have been right here. You can kind of see. We've got another up this way, and then I believe there is a third completely hidden. It's way back at the back end of that. 
and uh, we'll try to get all of those out because of course in order for us to paint this and do a good job we need this gone we don't just want to shoot you know spray paint across the top of that right but that is the dash structure again surface rust there were a couple places i think somewhere over here had a ground and then obviously we have this one that was totally concealed by ductwork didn't even know it was there uh, it is riveted on this side as well uh, here's the ground i guess we didn't cover that so we've got that point uh, if you do paint that, you'll probably want to sand it down, you know, do something to kind of have a good connection of some sort. Uh, star washer, if you're just, you know, hell bent on having it painted, sometimes that'll cut through your paint. Maybe don't put a couple coats there, type of a deal. But uh, that is about it, man. So I think I've walked you through everything here. I'll probably make my little schematic diagram, take a ton of pictures. Uh, because again, we want this stuff removed. You don't have to. But obviously, you know, like right here, trying to spray, you can slide that out of your way, but you can't here. You've got to remove it. The only thing here that really scares me that I'm not understanding is the OBD2 port because I've never removed one. It's very important, <laughs> and I'm not quite sure. That's something I don't want to screw up. I think that's actually the tab right there. I don't know that you can see it, but I'm pressing in on it. Um, I don't know if that's a lock or something, but uh, if I do have to mask that, I will. That's the only thing really that scares me. Everything else, I just we run the risk of screwing it up, like not because we don't know what we're doing, but because it's plastic, and that's what happens with plastic. Uh, so we'll probably get a feel for it pretty early on. But again, these are like push pin cable ties, right? The cable tie slides through the landing pads, so if we could ever find those, we would be home free because we could replace them as we go but uh, let me bring you around over here and you can see again most people you're just gonna replace the dash that's fine uh, it's nothing wrong with this this will eventually rust away it would take a long time don't get me wrong a very long time uh, again kind of depends on the conditions where you park the truck everything along those lines but I want this to be with me for a long, long time. It's already been 20 years, and this is something I wish the factory would have just painted it. I don't know what their idea is. I guess cost savings or something. But I'm going to come in, and we got a lot of sanding to do. The good news is it's not like heavy rust. It's just like surface stuff, which, again, a lot of times on an old car, people see this and freak. They're like, oh, it's rusted. I'm not going to give you 15 grand for that rust bucket, you jerk. <laughs> Screw me over. This is, I mean, this is minor stuff. This is like if you wash your car and the rotors, you know, flash rust type of a deal. That's all it is. But could have been 100% prevented had the factory have just painted it, you know. So, uh, again, it is what it is, though. So we will rectify it. I'm also thinking this is a very good chance for me. I've always wanted to get one of those belt sanders. Not like, obviously, you know, what you're thinking of, like, you know, drill bit or something. I'm talking like, you know, the body ones. I've got like the real narrow, like half inch, maybe one inch, you know, <laughs> uh, drums around them. And I always wanted to buy one. You'll probably think it's stupid, but for frame rails. And I'm not talking about the exterior of the frame rail. I'm talking about like going down inside the U channel. So if this was a frame rail, I've been like always just sanding by hand, right? Or with the foam block, those work really good there. But with the body saw, you know, or a body sander, I should say. I'm thinking that would work pretty cool. <laughs> so I've been seeing a Hazette one uh, a couple of times on Instagram ads, and I'm kind of, it's a really odd thing to see. They must know I, I'm going to have to sand soon, but I think that would be really cool, something to pick up, and I think this would be great for it because there's so many, like, crevices, like this area here, total pain in the butt. I mean, even with the wiring gone, that's going to be haphazard to get into, whereas if I had, like, you know, a six to eight, ten inch, whatever the length on the thing would be, sanding bell, just blow, you know, uh, hit it, just go to town. With a rotary tool, uh, that's an option, but it would work really good here on the sides of the panel, but then you never have, like, the sanding disc on the front, right? That's the downside, whereas with the tool I'm talking about, we would have it on that, and then if we wanted to do this, you just flip the tool, right? So... Uh, that might be something we can finally justify. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm going to go in and price them out tonight. I'm, I'm pretty excited now. But uh, I will say if the has that stuff's like stupid expensive, I'm not touching it. I have a tendency to think all air tools are almost created equal. Uh, there's probably like a couple of factories that make them all, rebrand them, paint them. You can get better internals if you want them type of a deal. Uh, but I have honestly had pretty good luck with clutch stuff from Northern Tool. Uh, one of their little... Uh, 
air nibbler type things I've got, and then one of their punches uh, with flange, like the flange plunge combo tool. I'm pretty happy with that thing, and uh, I might might just get with that. In fact, I actually thought of using it to widen this, but I might have to use my hand one, and then that way if we ever did want to do this or had to do this again, heater core, AC evaporator, whatever, I could slide that through from the top, but of course now I know the connection. That's totally gone because I've set it off to the side. But uh, I will quit rambling and fantasizing about purchasing new tools. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll get this taken care of. The one piece here that seems to be standalone if you wanted it to be, everything else here is like spot welded or riveted type of construction, uh, has seam sealers on it. This little guy right here, for whatever reason, is an extended brace and it is away from the main frame. So it's also got the least rust of any of these pieces on it. Case in point, this one is attached structurally. This one's held on with these two bolts. So I'll probably pull that because again, at the over lap you're gonna have rust on the main structure and this bracket and if we cheated it and didn't replace that it would be a stupid situation and it would render what we did useless so with that said hopefully the fan noise wasn't too bad I tried to change the directory sort of hold my hand over the direction that was coming towards the mic type of a thing but again it's just hot so my apologies but again just basically it's a lot of cable tie landings to disconnect uh, a couple of ground lugs a couple of things that might give us some trouble especially the obd2 deal because i've never actually in my life had to disconnect one like in this manner <laughs> so that'll be fun but uh, hey if you happen to see this i've probably already purchased my saw I keep saying saw, I mean belt sander, you know, so run with me on that, you know, just humor me, it's, it's getting late, I haven't eaten anything, but I think I'm going to call it a night, I'm going to get inside, eat supper, try to shower in case these storms actually materialize, so I uh, had a pretty good day here, we've torn it down to this point, and I think we're going to be able to just do a lot of grunt work getting the sanding done, and then we'll hit it with some paint, I'm torn on the paint, at first I was thinking black, and then I was thinking I don't have gloss black, I don't think, left. So that would make me have to go to a store to order something. And then I thought, hey, I could use blue, kind of like I did on my workbench, and then that way, you know, it's, it's my truck. <laughs> if it's ever stolen, it's like, well, it's a dash blue, it's mine, no one else would have that. Uh, and then I've also thought of just cleaning it down and hitting it with like some aluminum paint or some silver paint or hammer tune. There's so many options of things that would look good. The black, as I had initially thought, the problem I would have with that is if we were ever diagnosing things or trying if I heaven forbid had to take the dash out to this point again I was thinking if I like painted this black it's gonna make that way harder to see if this was silver if it was yellow if it was lime green if it was blue if it was hammer tune all of those that are not black are going to provide higher contrast for these landings uh, with the cable ties and the clips and everything I should also point out these clips here that you might have seen those were pretty much exclusively for the antenna, so I guess they did their best to keep the antenna from touching directly with the, <laughs> like, wrapped wires. I guess maybe that's why they had the foam. They just went above and beyond for the antenna. I've never known of that being an issue, but I guess it must be, or otherwise they wouldn't have done it because clearly we didn't bother to paint the dash to keep it from rusting. But uh, I'm excited. This is a good stopping point. Uh, this will probably be it for this video. We basically covered removing the plastic substructure, which I'll go ahead and show you, just so you know. We're legit. I'm going to come up here over all this mess we got all over the place. <laughs> so, there it is, again, on the back of the tarped duster, so that should keep it fairly sturdy. Uh, that will just detail it out before we reinstall it. And on that note, I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you've learned a little something. You know, I could not find a video. I couldn't find pictures. I couldn't find an old-school write-up from you know 1996 or 2003 or anything. So this is sort of uncharted territory. Hopefully it helps you. Again, if the video is not as quick as you want it, my apologies. My style, I try to provide you as much information as possible. That way, if you have questions, I don't get to them. Other people in the comments don't know. I've shown you everything. <laughs> what I know, you have seen. So uh, with that said, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to get inside. And uh, I have actually cleaned this up a little bit. You know, there's my little... Uh, funky little box there but uh, anyway uh, pretty happy with this as a stopping point and I will catch you back here for the next thrilling installments of the Ram Revival